Hello everyone and welcome back to the program. On today's show, we'll see how often the Bible uses the metaphor of measuring within the context of godly correction and spiritual growth. The lesson God wants us to remember is this. If we learn to carefully measure our lives God's way today, then we can avoid the measured destruction coming upon the whole world in the lead up to the return of Jesus Christ. The Trumpet Daily. We recently passed our 29th anniversary, 29 years. Back in 1989, the Philadelphia Church of God got its uh, small beginning start. It started off with this book here, Malachi's Message to God's Church Today. And this was a, a jolt for so many of God's people because if you go back before our beginning in 1989, Herbert W. Armstrong, he died in 1986. And he's the one that we've patterned our work after, his work anyway. And if you look at his work, if you look at what God did through him going back to the early 1930s, what a small beginning. And yet look at that church and the work that it was doing by the time that Herbert Armstrong died in 1986. How sad that uh, those who were uh, left in charge following his death, that they veered away from God's truth. They did away with uh, all of those teachings, those unique teachings of Herbert Armstrong. They discontinued all of his literature. They stopped his program. They closed up the college that he established. It's amazing history. It's incredible history. It's sad history in so many ways as well. Let's look, though, at what the Bible says in Zechariah 4 about that small beginning Starting with Herbert Armstrong, as I say, back in the 1930s. This is Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Eternal unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, that is, human might and human power, but by my spirit, says the Eternal of hosts. It was by God's power. That's the reason for all of the rapid growth and the expansion of that, of that work during the days of Herbert Armstrong's ministry. You can read a lot about that in his autobiography. We've advertised that on this program before. You can read about it in Raising the Ruins. Of course, that book has to do with uh, our work of raising the ruins following his death, following Herbert Armstrong's death. Well, it goes on and talks about how God would move mountains for this man so that he could do his work, his work of building for God, skipping down to verse 8. It says, Moreover, the word of the Eternal came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it, and you shall know that the Eternal of hosts has sent me unto you. This house, that's speaking of a, a church era, in this case, the sixth era of God's church. You can read about the eras of God's church in Revelation 2 and 3. But his hands laid the foundation this was a, a builder, this man. And notice, no, notice how he's described in verse 10. It says, For who has despised the day of small things or small beginnings? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. And so here is this builder, and he has this plummet in his hand or this, this measuring rod. You could say he's a great master builder, God's master builder. He was like the chief architect in so many ways, the, uh, the general contractor, heading up all of the construction, spiritually speaking. My father wrote an article in the latest uh, issue of our Royal Vision magazine, and he said here, if you're not measuring God's way, again, we're talking about measuring spiritually, if you're not measuring God's way, small beginnings will bother you. But when you really start to measure as God does, then you see that God is behind it all. It doesn't make a difference if it's one person with God. Those that aren't measuring their lives, small beginnings trouble them. They can't see God in a small beginning. They can't see God in a still, small voice. But if you're measuring, if you're really, as we've stressed so often on this program, if you're taking this knowledge and really applying it, 
and, and you're really a doer of God's Word, you're measuring, then you're going to be able to see where God's work is today. You'll know where God's true ministers are today. You have an obligation to learn how to measure God's way. As I say, you'll, you'll be surprised how many times uh, this analogy is used in the Bible. Let's look at Revelation 10. We see the example there of Herbert Armstrong, this prophesied uh, Zerubbabel in his hand as a plummet, this great measuring device. Let's carry on over into Revelation 10 and verse 11. Here is this work of raising the ruins or coming along and, and doing it again. Just like Amos 9 prophesied, raise up the ruins of old, God says, to his end time work, to his remnant church that's been around now for 29 years. It's hard to believe. We had a small beginning too back in 1989, but we've grown large over the years in reach, in power, in size, and scope. You can see it. You see it with some of the footage that we show you from time to time. You see it in our literature, with our college campuses, with our, uh, our private aircraft, with all the things that we use to dispense with God's message. The message going right around the world. This is Revelation 10 and verse 11. And he said unto me, You must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Go out and prophesy again, just like you did in the days of old, just like just like it happened before, go out and do it again. And that's what this work has been doing since late 1989. And as I say, it started with Malachi's message to God's church today. Notice what the next verse says. There should be no chapter break here. This is verse 1 of Revelation 11. And there was given me a reed likened to a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Now the temple, that's referring to God's house. Today, that means the church of God. God says to this servant, measure. Here again, he gives him a measuring device. And he says, you go and measure this temple or this church, and them that worship therein. We're, measure these individuals. Me measure these converts. These members of God's true church, the Companion Bible says that he has a measuring reed. Another translation says that it's a surveyor's rule. And so he's there to, to measure the brethren in God's church. And first, to be able to do that, they've got to rouse from sleep or slumber. God's people went to sleep following the death of Herbert Armstrong. And he had to rouse a few of them to, to be awake and to proclaim the truth of God and to warn God's people. Malachi's message to God's church today. That's the title of this book that started God's work in these last days. Let me take you again to that uh, Royal Vision article by my father recently. It says, God raised up a man to measure the altar or the ministry and the members but it says God wants us to realize that we all must measure. So you have a responsibility here too. God will raise up a servant to do it, just like he did with Herbert Armstrong, just like he did with my father, but we all have to measure, don't we? We have to measure ourselves, and we have to do it God's way. He says we can all take his word and measure everything that we're learning. If you aren't measuring, then you won't know where God's true ministry is. You won't know where the true church of God is. You'll be in darkness. You'll be in darkness. You won't know. You won't be able to see. But if you're measuring, if you're measuring God's way, then you'll know. Look at verse 2 in chapter 11. It says, But the court which is without the temple, that, that's speaking of the outer court. This is, again, talking about God's church. It says, Leave them out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's, that's talking about the outer court. They're not measured because they won't be measured. And so God has to measure them during the great tribulation with measured destruction. We'll see that in a moment in Amos 7. But here is the outer court of God's church, and they won't be measured 
And as many prophecies bring out, you can see it in Daniel and Malachi 3, Matthew 24, all through Revelation. The Laodiceans, that, that seventh and final era of God's church, God's people, God's, God's own family, they have to go into the great tribulation to receive correction from God so that they'll finally be measured. Let me take you to that prophecy in uh, Amos, Amos chapter 7. This is Amos 7 and verse uh, verse 7, and my father's talked about uh, this prophecy a number of times before. Verse 7 says, Thus he showed me, and behold, the eternal stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in uh, his hand. And so, again, we've seen these examples, this measuring reed or this, this plummet, or in this case, a plumb line. And usually it's talking about, about or used in the Bible, when you're talking about uh, constructing something or a building, measuring a building, but here it's talking about measuring for destruction. Measuring for destruction. Notice what God goes on to say, verse 8, And the Eternal said unto me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. And then said the Eternal, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So here's God talking, and he's saying, look, you get this warning message out. Warn my people. Warn my church. Warn the nations of Israel. Tell them. Tell them what's coming. This is a very measured destruction. It's not random or haphazard. It's carefully planned and calculated. It really does need to get through to God's people. So God says to his work, get out there and warn them. They may ignore it. They may refuse to be measured, but you still warn them in love. One last quote here. My father writes, God is using math to calculate his destruction. Math. He gets specific, as I say. But then he goes on and says, how much more is he going to measure the construction of or building of his mind and character in each of us? He's preparing king priests. And so we have to be measured the right way, God's way, with these teachings, with the truth of God, the Word of God, or else we'll be measured in that great tribulation. Those quotes that I gave to you, they're from our Royal Vision magazine. I've not offered this before on television. Uh, and typically, this is uh, given out to those that are very familiar with our work. They know a lot about our teachings, and they want to dig deeper. They want to dig deeper into God's truth. This magazine will help you do that. Royal Vision, it comes out every two months. It's not as frequent as the Trumpet magazine that we send out to so many of you. But if you're interested in being measured God's way, if you really want to go deeper into God's truth, ask our operators today if you can subscribe to Royal Vision, a magazine of spiritual understanding and depth a magazine that will really help you to understand your Bible. I've mentioned Malachi's message here. Make sure you also request a copy of this book if you don't have one already. And then this, coming up in the next segment, we'll be going through a, a section from Isaiah 28 that's uh, fully expounded upon in this booklet as well. So make sure that you contact our operators during the break or at the end of the program and request all of this free material. We offer it without cost or a follow-up. We'll be right back. The Trumpet Daily. Today we're talking about measuring God's way. We want to be measured. We want to take the Word of God and measure our lives, our marriages, our families. That's what God's Word is for. It shines a light on our path. It helps us to see if we're walking in the, in the steps of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Isaiah 28. I mentioned before the break that we'd go through uh, this chapter, Isaiah 28, and we'll start in verse 9. And listen to what the prophet says here. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who is God going to be able to teach? Who is, who is God going to be able to help understand Doctrine. It says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, they've matured spiritually. They've been weaned from the milk, and they're ready for strong meat, as Paul said in Hebrews 5. They're ready to, to graduate, so to speak. 
onto something deeper, something more meaningful. And God will teach them that. That means they're being measured. God's way, verse 10, it says, again, notice the precision here, the language. It says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, he says again, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. It's got to be... It's got to be just so. Mr. Armstrong talked about this passage and said God's Word, the Holy Bible, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, and it can only go together one way. And you need a piece from here and a piece over here, and you need to put it together. Here a little, there a little. But it's all according to this precept upon precept, line upon line, and you see how the prophet repeats it throughout here. Verse 11, it says, For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his people. This is just talking about God's people who don't understand God's truth like they used to. It doesn't make sense to them anymore because they've drifted so far from God. They've gotten away from from Bible study. Verse 12, To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. God says, this word, this truth that I have, this revelation from God, it's it's refreshing. It really does rejuvenate you. But for so many of God's people today, the, the truth of God, it doesn't refresh them like it used to. How much, how much nourishment and strength God wants to give us if we'll just receive it. And really let him go to work, measuring our lives in every little detail. Verse 13 says, But the word of the eternal was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. You put all the pieces together, you'll know which way to go. But if you reject it, if you're not refreshed by this anymore, then uh, you're going to fall backward. You're going to stumble through life. Notice what my father says. This is in the Isaiah End Time Vision booklet. We must grow up spiritually or or God can't motivate us enough to save us. He says history shows that, that most of God's churches eventually turned away from him. You can see this history in the Bible and in our books, like the history of God's true church. He says, that's why we must learn from him. That's why we must learn to measure every doctrine and every word of God. Then we can't be deceived. That quote's taken from this booklet, this wonderful little booklet, Isaiah's End Time Vision. Make sure that you request this free booklet together with Malachi's message. And as I say, this is the first time we're offering royal vision. We're offering that to a general audience like this. You can subscribe to our Royal Vision magazine, but you have to ask for it. Call our operators today and ask them. Verse 16, notice this. It says, Therefore, thus says the eternal God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. This is talking about what would be the foundation of God's church. It's actually a prophecy A prophecy that the Word, the being that was right alongside God for all eternity, that Word came in the flesh. It says in John 1, He came in the flesh and He established the church of God. And then the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 2, verses 19 through 21, that Jesus Christ, the the apostles, the, the prophets would be the foundation of the church and Jesus Christ would be the cornerstone. And here it's prophesied in the book of Isaiah, centuries before Jesus Christ ever came in the flesh. What a, what a wonderful book this is, to put all of this together, all of it inspired by God. God breathed, as Paul said to uh, his assistant Timothy, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. What a wonderful book, put together over all these centuries by 40-some authors, and it all fits together. It all tells the same story. It gives the same admonitions from beginning to end. Are you being measured by it? Are you letting it guide your life? Are you submitting to the truth of the Bible? Well, look at the next verse, verse 17. It says, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. Here again, measuring devices. 
And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Another uh, version of the Bible says, Also I will make justice the measuring line, and righteousness the plummet. You see, God judges with a measurement of righteousness. And if we aren't being measured in our lives now by doing the Word of God, then there is a judgment, a carefully measured judgment, Coming later, God corrects. He corrects in a very carefully and precise manner. It says here, if we measure the way we ought to, then we cannot fail. You will never fail if you follow God's directions and measure according to those directions. Do that, and everything you do will be a success. It'll be a success. That's from that royal vision, and this one too. We have to really give ourselves to God and measure very carefully to be able to do this job. We have to measure carefully. You can look down at the end of this chapter. I won't take the time to go through much of this. Verse 23, give ear and hear my voice. Hearken and hear my speech. Does he who plows for sowing plow continually? Does he continually open and harrow his ground? When he has leveled its surface, does he not scatter dill, sow common and Put in wheat in rows and barley in its proper place and spelt as the border. Here God is, now he's talking about farming, using the farming analogy and all the various methods of of farming and saying that's the way that I work spiritually. God's harvesting souls. You can read in verse 26, I think I have time. Verse 26 says, for his God does instruct him in discretion and does teach him. God is teaching us. He's educating us. He's harvesting us along. He wants to bring forth fruit in our lives, spiritually. Read about that in Galatians 5. God is a great harvester, and He does it according to a definite and precise plan. And He wants for us to to measure, to measure according to His perfect standard. Let's conclude over in Ephesians 4 and read something here that the Apostle Paul Uh, wrote to the brethren at Ephesus. This is talking about the the government and the church to begin with. Verse 11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so he puts these teachers in our midst. He puts these prophets, these evangelists, these pastors into the church of God so that the the church might be edified, so that the body of Christ might be strong and healthy, so that we might be carefully measured. Notice verse 13, it says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Notice it all, it culminates in perfection. Following in the steps of Jesus himself, it says the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The measure there, it has to do with the standard, a rule, a definite rule and standard. Stature has to do with maturity or coming to a full age. Of course, it's talking spiritually. Notice what one commentary has to say. This is Barnes' commentary. It refers to the growth of a man. The stature to be attained or to be attained to was that of Christ. He was the standard, not not in size, not in age, but in moral character. It says the measure to be reached was Christ, or, or we are to grow until we become like Him. That's Matthew 5, 48. Becoming like Christ or becoming like the Father, that's the perfect standard. We don't want to compare ourselves or measure ourselves against the standard of another human being. It's God's standard. It's God's rule. It's God's plummet. It's God's plumb line. It's God's measuring device that we want to abide by, that we want to use, that we want to use God's way. He he gives us that standard in His Holy Bible, and it's on us to receive it, to receive the Word of God with joy, and to go and use it to apply it to our lives. Well, this book, it really did measure the church, Malachi's message to God's church today. It came out as a lightning bolt in late 1989, early 1990. 
and really was a measuring device that, that aroused a lot of people from sleep. Make sure you request your own free copy today. And as I say, this is the first time we're offering uh, you the opportunity to subscribe to Royal Vision. So as you talk to our operators today here at the end of the show or later on this next week, make sure that you request all of the free material offered on today's program. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.